Page 12, The Great Renunciation. In the silence of that moonlit night, there was a full moon day of July, Asala. Such thoughts as these arouse in him. Youth, the prime of life, ends in old age, and man's senses fail him at a time when they are most needed. The hale and hearty lose their vigor and health when disease suddenly creeps in. Finally, death comes, sudden perhaps, and unexpected, and puts an end to this brief span of life. Surely, there must be an escape from this unsatisfactoriness, from aging and death. Thus, the great intoxication of youth, Yobanan Mada, of health, Arogya Mada, and of life, Jivita Mada, left him. Having seen the vanity and the danger of the three intoxications, he was overcome by a powerful urge to seek and win the deathless, to strive for deliverance from old age, illness, misery, and death, not only for himself, but for all beings, including his wife and child, that suffer. It was his deep compassion that led him to the quest ending in enlightenment and Buddhahood. It was compassion that now moved his heart towards the great renunciation and opened for him the doors of the golden cage of his home life. It was compassion that made his determination unshakable even by the last parting glance at his beloved wife asleep with the baby in her arms. Thus at the age of 29 in the flower of youth man, youthful manhood, on the day his beautiful Yashodara had given birth to his only son Rahula, Prince Siddhartha Gautama, discarding and disdaining the enchantment of royal life, scorning and spurning joys that most young men yearn for, tore himself away, renouncing wife and child and a crown that held the promise of glory and power. He cut off his long locks with his sword, doffed his royal robes, and putting on hermit's robe, retreated into forest solitude to seek a solution to these problems of life that had so deeply stirred his mind. He sought an answer to the riddle of life, seeking not a palliative, but a true way out of suffering to perfect enlightenment and Nibbana. His quest for the supreme security from bondage, Nibbana, had begun. This was the great renunciation, the greatest adventure known to humanity. First, he sought guidance from two famous sages, from Alara, Kalama, and Yujaka Ramaputta, hoping that they being masters of meditation, would teach him all they knew, leading him to the heights of concentrative thought. He practiced concentration and reached the highest meditative attainments possible thereby, but was not satisfied with anything short of supreme enlightenment. These teachers' range of knowledge, their ambit of mystical experience, however, was insufficient to grant him what he so earnestly sought, and he saw himself still far away from his goal. Though both Sages in turn asked him to stay and succeed them as the teacher of their following, the ascetic Gautama declined. Paying obeisance to them, he left them in search for the still unknown. In his wanderings, he finally reached Eurovela by the river Niranjara at Gaia. He was attracted by its quiet and dense groves, and the clear waters of the river were soothing to his senses and stimulating to his mind. Nearby was a village of simple folk where he could get his arms. Finding that this was a suitable place to continue his quest for enlightenment, he decided to stay. Soon five other ascetics who admired his determined effort joined him, and they were Konjana, Badia, Vapa, Mahanama, and Asaji. This is the end at page 15.